Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit more chatty. I wanted to share with you the products that I have on what I'll call my beauty bucket list. So a lot of us have a wish list. I have a wish list and to me my wish list is products that are new and launching, products that are favorites of my favorite YouTubers that I watch, but it's basically like an ongoing list of things I would like to try and buy, most of the time with the actual intention of buying them sometime within anywhere from the next month to six months, maybe sometime this year, but it's usually things that like I have the intention to actually purchase at some point. And I'll like go through that list and sometimes I'll take things off that I realize like it was just hype and I'm over it and that's fine. But again, my wish list products to me, it's like an ever evolving ongoing thing. This however is something a little bit different. To me, the beauty bucket list are those products that for years, for like the longest time I have wanted to try them. It's like an ongoing die hard love affair with these particular products, but for one reason or another, I just like can't bring myself to actually purchase them. Sometimes it's like the product is just way too expensive. Sometimes it's just that it's very difficult to get my hands on or shipping, shipping fees are like astronomical from the brand that makes them. So these are products that they're not just like brand new that I just came across. These are things that I have wanted to try it for a really, really long time, and if I could like pick any beauty product, if I didn't have to worry about money or anything like that, these are the things that I want most of all, like more than anything else. And I will say, like over the last couple of years, I've slowly started to let myself purchase some of these types of products, like not often, maybe like once a year, I'll purchase like one of these bucket list items for myself, actually. And I was thinking about this as I was compiling this list because I never really formally wrote it down anywhere. It was always just kind of in the back of my mind. Uh, but maybe I think in like, December or November of 2016, I finally purchased one of these YSL lipsticks. These are the, what are they called, Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks. These were so all over. Everyone who was a bloggers, blog post, Instagram, YouTubers, because the packaging on these lipsticks is like so iconic and beautiful and they're so expensive. They're like 36 or $37, which is completely ridiculous for a lipstick. But I waited until the Sephora VIB sale or until I had one of those coupons to save like $20 off my purchase of 50. And I finally bought myself one of these. And that felt like this was one of those bucket list things that I started blogging five years ago. I always wanted one and now I finally have one. And to be honest, like I'm, I'm gonna be real with you guys, this is not my favorite lipstick formula at all. I, I don't love it. I feel like it is very hydrating, but it doesn't last very long. It's pretty, but it's not to me like the best lipstick I've ever used. I actually like the Rouge Pour Couture lipsticks better formula wise. These are just prettier to look at, but it's still the fact that I finally actually just got to own one and got to try it for myself. That was kind of like a big deal to me. So. I wanted to share the products that for right now are left on that list that I still haven't bought. But before we get into it, I just want to say hi and welcome to any of you who are new to my channel. My name is Lauren. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out and chatting beauty with me. I do upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with occasional bonus videos on Saturday. So if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more of my content, I hope you'll click that button before you click out of this video. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to stop rambling at you guys and we're gonna get into my beauty bucket list. So as I was sitting down and reflecting on things, I realized even more so than specific products, this is almost more about brands as a whole, but like a few specific things underneath those brands. So like the first one I wanna talk about is Spectrum Brushes. So if, if you're on Pinterest, if you're like a Pinterest addict, you probably have seen uh, Spectrum brushes like all over the place if you pin beauty content at all. They're known for these like clamshell cases that they have filled with makeup brushes. They look so flippin' pretty. And I know, I know you guys, I've said I'm like over it with the fantasy and the mermaids and the unicorns and the fairies and all that jazz. Um, but I feel like the way that they do their brushes even though they have a little bit of that fantasy theme, it's not like overboard, it's not overkill, it's still really, really pretty. And I have just been dying to basically own one of their brush sets. Not even necessarily one of the clam ones, like they have these marble brush sets that look absolutely incredible, but they're expensive. Like 
you're looking, I don't know, upwards of 60, 70, 80 dollars for one of those brush sets, which when you break it down like price per brush, it's actually not that bad. I just haven't ever been able to bite the bullet and drop that much money on a brush set. Typically, I usually get very affordable brushes. I like e.l.f. brushes, Wet n Wild, BH Cosmetics. Um, I have gotten quite a few more expensive brushes in like subscription boxes, but I haven't necessarily gone out and spent my own money on them. So I kind of have had like just that uh, feeling of kind of like I have so many makeup brushes already. I don't really need more. I just think they're so pretty and I just I really, really want them. So maybe eventually at some point I will invest. The other thing too is Spectrum I have to order online and I have to pay shipping and that's just an extra cost on top of the brushes themselves. And I'm one of those people that like I hate paying for shipping. It's really dumb. I know that, but it like really kills me to mark up basically the cost of that product even more just in the shipping costs. So I know I've been avoiding it, but it is something someday I really, really want to try. Kind of on a similar note for me is Zoeva. I want to try Zoeva products so flippin' bad, I can't even. If they ever bring that brand to Sephora or Ulta in the United States, I basically will die. I will just be over the moon, so excited. I have my fingers crossed, but I have absolutely no idea if or when that will ever happen. And the thing about Zoeva, well, okay, so first of all, they also have absolutely beautiful looking brushes that I would love to get my hands on, but are also expensive. But even more so, I really wanna try their eyeshadow palettes so bad. I watch a lot of YouTubers that are from Europe, like a lot of the girls who um, you do YouTube out of the UK talk a lot about Zoeva products because they are way more accessible in uh, Europe. They are a German brand, but like if you live in London, there are definitely many stores that retail them. I think very recently now there are a few retailers in the US that do carry some Zoeva products. I don't know how much and I haven't ever actually been in a store that carried them before. so. I just haven't had the opportunity to ever actually see them in person, but they look so pretty and they're really affordable. And I think that's the reason why I'm so curious is that even in US dollars, a Zoeva eyeshadow palette is $26.50, which is very reasonable. And I've heard that the quality is better than drugstore. So I, I like really just I wanna know what they're like. The downside is that because they're a European brand and they're not really sold very easily or they're not very accessible in the US, it's like $9 for shipping for, you know, anything from their website. And it just like kills me. The idea of like getting an affordable palette that's less than $30 and then having to tack on another $9 in shipping fees kind of like to me defeats the purpose. And I'm just being dumb and principled in sticking to that because I know if I really wanted to try these things, I could legit just go out and order them. And then in a few weeks I would have them and it would be over. But like, I just, I don't know, for some reason that's just like really been bothering me and I don't know why, I just haven't done it yet. Eventually, one of these days, I'm gonna have to like just bite the bullet and make an order from Zoeva instead of waiting for them to finally be available in like a retail store close to me. But yeah, in general, Zoeva is like a bucket list brand must try at some point. So the next thing on my bucket list is Charlotte Tilbury. Like I couldn't even necessarily narrow down to like a specific Charlotte Tilbury product. I have like a mile long list of Charlotte Tilbury products that I want to try. She's very expensive. She's a very expensive brand and normally I don't spend a lot of money on luxury makeup, but her products look so beautiful, so classic, so wearable, and I just like, ugh, I want them all. I want to try the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. I want to try her lipsticks. I know Wayne Goss, I believe, talks about her like finishing powder. Like I've heard so many great things about so many of her products. I don't, I don't even know where to start to be honest but everything is super pricey and they don't sell it at Sephora or at Ulta so I can't like use rewards points or anything like that as I normally would to like put towards those products. So like I know if I wanna get it, I'm just gonna have to fork out the cash. I'm not gonna be able to like redeem credit card points or anything like that. No, I'm just gonna have to spend my cold hard cash to get my hands on her products. And I think that's been part of the reason why I've held back for so long. A lot of times when I like, I'm gonna make a splurge purchase, I'll like redeem my extra like cash back money from my credit card for like a Sephora gift card or something like that because I feel less guilty 
about spending reward money than I do money I made actually having to go out and work. I don't know if that makes any sense or if anybody else feels the same way, but it's sort of like free money. So I kind of am like, you know what, this can be what I use to splurge and treat myself. But uh, I don't really have that freedom necessarily with Charlotte Tilbury products. I mean, I could also look into seeing if I can get a gift certificate to another retailer that might carry her stuff now that I'm thinking about it. But yeah, in general, I feel like as far as luxury makeup brands go, Charlotte Tilbury seems very up my alley and I'm really curious about it. And like someday, someday I will try some of her products. It's just hasn't happened yet. And the last thing that's like definitively on my bucket list of things I wanna get for myself someday is a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. Lord, those things are so expensive. Like, you're looking at over $100 minimum. Like, her, okay, so maybe like the little five pan palettes are under $100, but at that point, it's like, what's the point? I, w I would not spend $60 for five colors. I'd rather spend $200 and get like the giant palette because then at least the per eyeshadow cost seems more worth it or I can at least get more looks out of things even if I'm going to be spending a ridiculous amount of money. I don't know, maybe I'm just being insane, but her eyeshadows just look so incredible. The formula looks beautiful and it looks like one of those crazy ridiculous expensive purchases that for me being such an eyeshadow junkie, I would probably actually use and totally love. And like I know there are a lot of other very expensive eyeshadow palettes out there like the Pat McGrath ones, the Viseart ones, and those also look really cool but there's, I don't know, there's just something about the Natasha Denona ones that specifically call to me above everything else. Like if I had to choose between her and Tom Ford and like all these other super high-end luxury brands, I feel like Natasha Denona is the one that I would pick. You know, and as I sat down and was like planning out this video and thinking about what I wanted to talk about, I realized something about myself because there are a lot of very luxurious brands out there. Your Chanel, Dior, Tom Ford, Guerlain, like they, there's so much beautiful luxury makeup out there and like I didn't want to just include expensive products for the sake of including expensive products if they really weren't something that like has truly been calling to me. And there have been products over the years from those brands like the Burberry Fresh Glow Highlighter. I, got, I had like a hot minute with that where I was like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Honestly, I think it's just the lace embossing like detailing on it that I think is making me over the moon. But then I realized that like, I don't think I would really care that much. Like if I actually spent 60 something dollars on that highlighter, would I really love it and enjoy it any more than the other highlighters that I have that are like less than half the price? Probably not. And so I think that it kind of like, as I was asking myself, like what is really on my bucket list? A lot of products that maybe three or four years ago, I might have said would have been on my bucket list, like a Chanel lipstick or a Tom Ford lipstick. I realized, you know what? At this point, I don't think it would make me that much happier or I would love it that much more than the things I've already tried. So I don't know, I think even though this list is pretty short and maybe I will have new things that I will add to it in the future, I felt like these are like the true products. It's not even necessarily about them being expensive, it's just the things that I've been so curious about that I feel so drawn towards that I really, really want to try for whatever reason, and well, the reasons I just told you, I haven't really been able to get over that hump and actually like make the purchase yet, but the intention's out there. Like someday it'll happen. And in a way, it's kind of nice to not just have that instant gratification. It's nice to kind of have that thing in the future that you can aspire towards, uh, you know, being able to purchase for yourself one day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear what's on your beauty bucket list. So let us all know in the comments section, what are the products that like you have wanted for the longest time? Or if money was no object and you could just have whatever you wanted, what would be like the one, two or three things that like you want more than anything else? If you guys enjoyed this video and like these kind of more chatty videos, make sure you give this one a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Again, if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more of my videos, make sure you click that button before you go. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having an amazing Monday. I know it's Monday, but as far as Mondays can go, I, I hope this one is great and uh, I will see you in Wednesday's video. Bye.